hello hello it's me so i finished piecing the baby quilt that i was working on as you can see here and i was thinking i just record the the sandwiching of it between the three layers because why not i'm here i'm doing it half the time and i don't know maybe somebody would like to see it i don't know anyway so a couple of things first um if you have done the little pillow with me the celebratory pillow um then you heard me talk about that stitch where you don't see your stitches on the front of your quilt that i found on a blog and i said i've never used it and i would like to use it on a project one day and i figured well this is a new project why not use it so i did and i must say i'm super 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 disappointed because look i looked at the way this lady was doing it and this is what it gives me and i'm really i much rather see my stitches than see this so i'm very disappointed but i was so far into the quilt by the time i noticed it that i didn't really want to rip it back because it would take so much longer and i couldn't really stop using it because you would see the difference so I finished the whole quilt in this stitch and I must say I will never do it again. I rather see my stitches up front than see this. So that being said, that's just for me. You may have different experiences with it. I think if you do it more like a ladder stitch rather than um, up, so more vertical than, you know, I mean more um, horizontal than, than vertical on top of the edges of your patterns, that might work, but it it takes twice as long. Um, which, I mean, wouldn't be an awful thing, but, you know, I don't have a problem with my stitches sh showing, so I will not do this again. Oh, sorry, my hand is showing too. And, um, anyway, so that's just my experience with it. I will not do it again, but by all means, I think you should try it out and see how you like it. And here, my little cat is asleep, my setup <laughs> for you today there is my little gooseneck that i usually have up front and this little chair usually holds one of my plants and it now will hold you as i'm doing this because i still haven't figured out a better uh, a better way to do all this for back here so my gooseneck is wandering from the back of my here to the front where my desk is and all that so i'm gonna pop you in here really quickly and you get this little bird's eye view and then we can move on okay Hold on, I'm going to pop you in there really quick. Right, so I hope this works. So this is my quilt top, and this is the backing for it. Oh, Radish, may I have this please? Thank you. I bought um, cotton muslin with these little lions printed on it. I think they're super cute. And his name is Leon, so I figured that would work. And they, they like these lavendery colors in the light greens and the light blues so I figured that green would work so let me get the top off what you do now is you put your backing down wrong side up because you want it right side showing when you're done excuse me radish I'll just move my stuff not to inconvenience the cat right then we will need um flannel for the padding I, I always use flannel for my padding never the the batting stuff because I don't like them too puffy and too too warm so I always use flannel so I'm gonna lay this back down here for a sec because I was out of any kind of flannel so I had to buy some and this is it and we're just gonna lay it on here and then we cut it over here because I got way more than is needed. So we just cut it here. There we go. And I have decided to give this quilt a um, border. So this doesn't have to be super exact because um again it's going to be a little shorter these um, diamonds are going to be cut right there in half so will the, the ones on this bottom edge anyway then we take this back off again and we put this down 
like so. Maybe like so. <laughs> Sure, it's nice and flat. We don't want any um, wrinkles or anything. So it's best to do this actually on a hard surface, like um, you could probably do it on your floor. The smaller quilts I like to do on my kitchen table, but we're not over there right now. I could, I could. Well, we're here now, so this is what's gonna happen. And then I usually iron all of this you know what let me just iron it really quickly i have my iron here let me just iron this really quickly because usually i iron it all sorry I'm, I'm staying quite away from you don't worry i'm not gonna burn your butt you could just go and sit somewhere else to be honest but no right then we put the top on like so make sure that it is all you want the bottom two layers about an inch inch and a half bigger than your quilt top because there will be uptake when you quilt and you don't want to run out of the bottom layers before you're finished quilting so you know that they don't shrink under it with the uptake okay so now I like when, when I have all three layers together, I like to give it one more press just to make sure it's all flat and nice and together. And then I will um, pin it all because I'm going to safety pin based. So I'm going to press this really quickly. I will pause this because it's not very exciting to watch me iron. And um, I also have to take it out because my cat does not like me ironing too close to her bum. Anyway, so I'll be right right back Right, so here we are back um, Like I said, I used I usually like to put this on as large a surface as I can my kitchen table just a you know something underneath underneath so I don't hurt my table but um, That's where I like to usually iron these because I like to iron it from the middle out so that there are no Possible wrinkles underneath you really want it as wrinkle free as you possibly can and straighten it out and make sure there is nothing folded up under any of those layers so and then I get my pins they live in here with all the other needles that I could possibly need ever I don't know where I'm a lot of these needles are given to me by people that um, no longer sew or thought they would and then ended up not liking it and you know so I end up with a lot of these things and I use them all up right so my pins live here and I like to pin these quilts the way I quilt so I start in the middle and work my way out and I I like to usually put a pin every two inches about so I'm just gonna start right here and it's nice to have a hard surface under it because you know you can just pin through and not get um, your carpet or you know a blanket or something so I have my cutting board under here right now and I need to buy new pins because these are getting not so sharp and they're starting to pinch the fabric right and usually my quilts are flatter after I iron them I I'm just like I said I'm not happy about this method I'm not going to use it again I will make another one but for now this one is it oh, and my husband and my son are out finishing the rest of our grocery shopping and I told them to get me a fabric marker I have only fabric chalk like those big um, tailors chalks and I don't want to use that for this so they're getting me a washable marker for my for my quilt so I because I'm thinking about doing maybe an overall pattern instead of just you know going around all these all these diamonds maybe i should stitch it in the ditch and just maybe see if i can fix some of this 
by doing that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I think it's just going to get an overall pattern and I hope for the best that maybe it obscures those. Uh, maybe not. I'm very upset. I'm very upset with this. But here I am telling you, you should try it because maybe you have different results than I do. You know, maybe you're a bit more clever than I am <laughs> in these things and you figure it out. Um, like I said, doing this, I thought maybe she meant a ladder stitch um, or invisible stitch that you use to, like when you make a pillowcase and you, and you close the last little bit or a, a bag and you close the last little bit of the bag and you want it to be invisible that stitch um i don't know i don't know this is what came out for me and i am not a happy camper any other quilt for me that would have been fine but this one it had to be this one i know better next time every time you want to make something special <laughs> there you are right that's just how it goes And I'm going from the middle out because I can still push, you know, all the fabrics. And should there be, you know, a little um, fold or something under it, I can still pull it out and make sure that there isn't any folds under it. There we go. Right. Because you want this to be as flat as possible and not, you know having folds in there and then you have to do it all over again and like I said I do it on a hard surface because I can feel when my pin goes through all three layers without having to pick it up because when you pick it up you're gonna have a chance to get folds in there again so I'm going as far as my cutting mat goes and then I just start moving it around because by then I have a good layer of um, I have it, I have it secured quite a bit, if that means, if that makes sense. And there are um, basting safety pins out there that are bent a little so that when you go through the fabric um, it's easier to close them because I'm not sure if you can even see what I'm doing here let me let me get you a little closer let's see hold on I have to move this back let me get you in a little closer so basically I am okay going through all three layers until I can feel my mat underneath and then back up and these pins have one side a little bent so that it's easier for you to close them um i have these because they are cheaper <laughs> they're cheaper safety pins so that is what i'm using in those um and don't use the really cheap ones i mean i'm i'm not a good example i just use whatever but use some nice um okay let me show you the difference this where's one let me see let me find one in here so these are good safety pins they are they have a good head well, where are you oh let me zoom out a little okay so these are good safety pins they are really stable they don't bend they have a good head up here that doesn't open easily and um, you actually really have to give them a good push to open and close them. These on the other hand are not so good safety pins. If you can see they are already bent. Um, they bend quite easily. You don't want that because when they bend they can open and close on their own really easily. Um, they sometimes open just by me putting the hoop on and then I get stuck everywhere. This one is not trash so you want these and the size depends on you know what size you like to work with 
um, I have a lot of those cheap ones because, well, that's what I have. Because, again, that's what I have been given. But I'm slowly but surely phasing them out and replacing them with those good safety pins. And you need a lot if you want to do this. Because, again, you want a safety pin about every two inches. Um, and depending on how big your quilt is, you, you will need quite a few safety pins that way. So this is, again, one of those really terrible cheap ones. But every quilt I face some out and I get a couple new ones. And then eventually I will have the good ones. There we go. And you definitely want them to be sharp so that they don't um, break any threads in your fabric. You could, of course, baste this with a thread and needle. And with my, with the other quilts, the, um, where do I have them now? Let me go grab one. With these quilts, I am, I do baste them with uh, threads when I make these overall fun, just, you know, wild quilts. I do thread baste them with thread and needle because it just, uh, I, I don't know, it works better for me than with the paper pieced quilts. So these are all thread basted. I just need to finish quilting them all on. And then this one can go out. So I make these a little different than I do these. Maybe maybe we'll do a video on one of those one one day. I think I'll make one soon-ish. We'll see. I'll let you know. Right. So I'm not sure how spellbinding it is to watch me pin this. So I'm going to pause the video really quickly and I'll be back when I finished pinning all this okay see you in a bit right so not sure why my screen is now so dark I can't really tell I hope this isn't in the video anyway I have pinned it all my husband and my son came home from shopping and they forgot the fabric marker but they were startled by a couple of really good prices on some things <laughs> so all is forgiven. Um, I have pinned it all except the last ones. I still have actually my paper templates in these last ones and they're gonna stay in there for as long as I can keep them. One already came out in here. This is the one. So but everything else is nice and pinned. Now I can move it around. I can turn it over and just inspect how the back is. And that is nice and flat. There aren't any like big wrinkles in it or anything and I can fix you know the small wrinkles as I get along. I probably will repin this edge a little, um, just pull it a little more. I forgot to really give it a nice tug on the sides, um, but that's easily fixed. And then I can start quilting. And you quilt from the middle out again so that you have plenty of time. If there is um, puckering or anything on the back, you can fit. You know you can just. Pull it and finish that a little and make sure that you don't have any folds or anything in there and then um, also the uptake you know you just start from the middle out and go out and out and out and out and then you're finished so not having the fabric marker I'm thinking I will see if I can stitch in the ditch or maybe just do a really pretty embroidery stitch over the top to make this a little less the way it is um, and again I'm gonna finish fixing this really quickly I think it's just those two rows those three rows that I need to take out and push it out a little and then I can start quilting I have my thread it's over there let me go grab it oh, why did it go here here it is 
I fixed my pouch up. It went from having all the templates and all the pre-cut fabric and everything in here to just having my scissors and the thread that I picked. But I might I might pick different thread now. Maybe some embroidery thread. It has my um, needle case in here, my needles, and some beeswax. I can take these out. I no longer need these. And another thimble and my um, needle holder. And I have made another thimble. This is a... Um, palm thimble that you use for uh, sashiko sashiko i'm never really sure how to pronounce this please i'm so sorry if i pronounce it incorrectly but that's what these thimbles are for and i figured why not try one so i made one and um i might put a tutorial together on how i made these because these are this is basically a smooshing together of two different thimbles that i saw um so i'll try this out and see and <laughs> report back how i like this okay so that's that. I might use a hoop for this because, again, thinking I will use some embroidery stitches on it. And we'll see. We'll see. I'll let this percolate overnight and we'll see what happens by tomorrow. <laughs> I plan on taking this on my trip with me. I'm going to see a friend of mine in California. So this quilt is going to go with me and will be... Um, quilted on the road. It'll see a few things before it gets shipped overseas to its recipient and I will definitely show you when it's done. All right, see you later. Bye. Hello, it's me. I finished piecing the quilt. Here it is.